Hi everyone, welcome to the course once again. Uh, and let's talk a bit about exercises in a very short um, uh, format and focus on the practicality of doing the exercises and what to keep in mind. So, uh, with this exercise, with wave motion, uh, what's the most important part and how can we approach it? So the most important part here is getting the right spacing and there are a couple of different ones. So if we look at the first example, uh, the even motion or consistent spacing, what does it mean? To make this right, to make this wild enough, uh, we just need to keep in mind that the speed doesn't change. And because of that, the form shouldn't change as well, at least here. So it means that every frame, all these edges travel the same distance and so you can make a guide divide uh, this in equal uh, parts and essentially you move all the vertices all the edges the same distance every frame and this uh, applies both to the vertices the top parts of the curve and also to this parts of the curve so you'll notice that the spacing, it is roughly the same. And you'll never get it perfectly right. So it's okay if it wobbles just a tiny bit, but it will work if in general, if we look at it, we don't see anything that stands out, stands out way too much. So if we have something like this, for example, we'll immediately see this kind of change because the spacing is twice as small. So usually we tend to avoid uh, things like this, so sudden slowdowns or sudden uh, suddenly getting to a halt, suddenly stopping the motion, or suddenly having an acceleration and then returning to the same spacing. So in this exercise, uh, this kind of stuff will break the motion and that's pretty much it. So as long as you keep in mind the spacing of the vertices, as long as you keep in mind the spacing of the edges and their angle, uh, you'll make sure. It won't be easy at all, that's for sure. It's not an easy exercise, uh, but I'm sure you can make it work. And as for the approach, try to make it uh, kind of rough first, so you just need a guide, you can draw the dots to help you, and then start by drawing a curve, that seems nice, because you'll have to draw it so many times after that. So I can draw in pieces, or like in segments of the curve, to keep it more consistent. And then, for example, that's what we have. And then the next frame, we move it like this. Oh, you can even draw this uh, like guide with certain positions for the curve uh, and then animate on top of that guide. So maybe when you're starting out, this can be much simpler for you because you're seeing the curve and you're seeing the distances that each part travels and you're like, oh, okay, so maybe this part travels way too much. Uh, so we're decreasing this distance. We're looking at this and ultimately we want to make this animation without this guide. Uh, but at the start, it is totally fine to use it. Now, second exercise is this one. So in this one, the wave accelerates, which means the spacing increases with each frame. And what does it mean if we look at the edges? It means that all the edges and all the vertices are getting faster and faster with each frame and at first 
the acceleration is pretty small so you can see that the distance increases but really really slowly it's not even that noticeable and then the further we go the faster the change gets and that's how acceleration works so when you're accelerating the longer you accelerate the more distance you travel and the same thing so you can notice that the angle of these marks it's pretty similar and this uh, makes sure that the waveform stays roughly the same which is not a requirement uh, in animation all the time but for this exercise if we want to have the same kind of curve uh, it is important and the same happens with every other edge so this one's again work nearly the same so this one goes an accelerates and then decelerates so we go from slow to faster and then we start slowing down slowing down slowing down slowing down slowing down slowing down and then the slowdown becomes really slow so this is the kind of spacing that we get here and I want to talk a bit about the other methods of animating waves so uh, right now we were talking about animating waves straight ahead and what does it mean it means we are drawing each frame after the previous one sequentially so what is the other way of animating waves so we can animate waves uh, in a different way as well uh, which is by using keys and what does it mean so well keys usually mean some kind of uh, important drawings either for storytelling or for form or for changes but they are the foundation of animation and then we'll have breakdowns and in-betweens so the drawings that serve the purpose of completing the motion but are not as important as in-betweens so for animating a simple wave or a flag we can use this principle of using keys and what does it mean so what keys could we possibly have so for a simple wave like this we can have a key that is okay there is a section at the bottom and there is a section at the top and then the next most important key would be okay so there is a section at the bottom there is a section at the top so the most important frame is a flick frame flip frame flipped frame so when this section is at the top and the section is at the bottom with this alone we can kind of create a sense of motion let's try it it won't be very interesting but let's pose it here okay but we can see how it can possibly go even with this and then we're doing in between and we're adding essentially an in between um i mean i can call it a breakdown here but is it really a breakdown with a simple animation hard to tell it's not sad complex to really tell much with this breakdown so the key between these two keys would be okay so we have this wave and it should go here we have this wave and it should go here so if we look at it we're like okay so we need this wave to go here and this edge and this edge has to be uh, connected in motion so if we are animating even motion we need to put this frame in the middle between these two lines between this line and this line uh, which I did here and then we need to take care of this thing so right now we're connecting them with a line that stays on the same level in terms of height 
and then we need to continue this keeping roughly the same angle and height and we are keeping this and here we have options we can either have it appear almost exactly at the same uh, height or we can create this kind of frame and this will mean that the wave kind of increases in size from this point and then it starts uh, moving pretty much with the same height so we can have these two options and they will give different animations so it will be either this kind of animation where the amplitude increases as we go or it is the constant uh, motions that we had in the first example so this is our first frame in between these two and now let's add a frame between the last frame and the first frame so again this part should go here this part should go here so finding the middle so it is roughly over here And then we're adding the other part. And then we're adding this part. So we have these four drawings. And they already show us, well, oh. <laughs> and that's when you have to pay attention. Because I wasn't paying attention. And I did the drawing in reverse. So, here the green, so what can we do? Well, let's cheat a bit. It should be here. So, the green is the next frame and the red is the previous frame. And we in between did Z as the way around. So, we can just do this and cheat our way a bit. So, putting it here, between this and this. And pushing this further. Okay, so now we have our animation. It's not perfect. And at this point, I would probably go and refine these frames, refine it. Uh, because these frames are the most important ones. If they have issues and mistakes, uh, they will carry on and increase with all the other frames. And then we can add frames between these frames and so on. So we just have to be mindful of the position. And ideally, sometimes we need to... So we only need to ideally use uh, onion skin or light table when we are doing in-betweens, not the keys, uh, but for our purposes, do as you want for now. Uh, it's just a goal to learn it. And try to learn to flip between frames, understand motion from that, because that would be way, way better for you in terms of learning and understanding uh, the feeling of the motion. Because with obvious examples like this, it is pretty clear what to track and how the form changes, uh, even using light table. But with more complex examples, we'll run an issue that it's so complex or the motion is pretty complex in terms of changes that if you just take the onion skin and try to in between it directly, uh, you won't know what goes where just looking at these greens and red lines. And you can always double check yourself. So we can do a frame, okay. Do a frame like this. And do like, okay, so I think these lines should be here. And then you can enable and see, okay. So I almost got it. I just need to put it here. And maybe this can be a tiny bit higher, but that's not an issue. And so on. 
So that's two ways. One going from one frame to the other frame, animating straight ahead, and the other one is doing keys like that. So hope that helps, and wish you good luck with your animations.